Yo, welcome to the first episode of a fire new series on the channel. We are in 1983, just imported our expansion, Las Vegas Hustlers. This was created by LL Cool Joe. I don't know who that is. I just downloaded this preset offline. And this is who we're gonna be rocking with. So this is gonna be a simulation rebuild type series. Of course, we're gonna import our team here in 1983. The import doesn't go through until the 1984 off season. So we just put in our application in order to join the NBA and of course we'll have an expansion draft and guess who's in the 1984 draft none other than Michael Jordan so without further ado put in our application to join the league and of course it's 2k so it's gonna be accepted and I'm just sort of making this idea up I feel like we should probably add another expansion team sort of as like a rival almost but also to keep the conferences equal right so I think we're gonna use a pre-built expansion team I'm kind of stuck between the Pittsburgh force and the Vancouver Ravens because I feel feel like Pittsburgh and Vancouver both really need an NBA team. Canada already has a team, but so does Pennsylvania. Since Vancouver is already going to get a team later in like 1993, I think we're going to go ahead and go with the force just so Pittsburgh has a team as well. So there's our rival, the Pittsburgh force. Of course, it's going to be a cross conferences. So it'll be like a cross conference rival, but got to keep the conferences equal, of course. And if anyone's unfamiliar with the rosters in 19, what, 83, here's what we're rocking with. I'm just gonna go over the best players in the league, really. We don't need to see every team in depth yet. We got Larry Bird in his prime and the Boston Celtics. Kareem, of course, always in his prime because the longevity of this man was ridiculous. 36 years old, Moses Malone up here, of course, Magic Johnson about to be in his prime, only 24. The Magic Bird rivalry is just now heating up. Of course, that's why this era is called Magic versus Bird. Isaiah Thomas, still young, entering the league, and aging George Gervin. We got Sidney Moncrief, Julius Irving, the doctor himself. We got Robert Parrish in here, Mark Aguirre, Kevin McHale. I wonder if he's gonna be calling his own games. Why did they do this man so dirty with the face scan? That, that is so bad. Bernard King's in the league. We got Bill Lambeer, Rolando Blackman on the Mavericks. He he ends up getting his jersey retired with them. Ralph Sampson and D Dominique Wilkins starting to enter his prime. So a pretty stacked league. They uh, did not hold back with giving this guy some crazy overalls. So of course, I'm going to have to automate everything for this season. And uh, the 1984 NBA off scene is where we get our stuff popping. Okay, Larry Bird staying true to MVP, Ralph Sampson, Rookie of the Year, Kevin McHale, six man, Jack Sigma, DPOY instead of Sidney Moncrief. And I don't think that most approved player was a thing in 1984, but if it was, apparently Dom Wilkins would be the one to win it. And we got a black woman as executive of the year. NBA making history back in 1984, okay. Here are your all-NBA teams if you cared to see it. I'm not, you know, too interested because we're not even in the league yet. And of course, the Celtics and the Lakers are supposed to go head to head in the finals this year. I'm sure that'll happen. Surprise, surprise, Celtics, Lakers, Celtics win just like in real life. And Larry Bird takes home the finals MVP just like in real life. <laughs> hey, we trying to add two expansion teams and they told us no. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to approve that. They try to hoe us. <laughs> All right, here we are realigning the league, and I'm pretty sure it looks straight. I'm gonna keep the conferences the same. The Hustlers, of course, in the Western Conference here in the Pacific Division. And I guess adding the Pittsburgh Force actually made the conferences uneven for right now, but it'll, you know, weigh itself out later whenever we get to a 32-team league, so it's not a big deal at all. Pittsburgh Force, of course, in the Eastern Conference in the Atlantic Division, and hell yeah, let's get it popping. All right, moment of truth, the draft lottery. Who will be the first addition to our Las Vegas Hustlers? And only show seven teams in the lottery, but it will show nine whenever we get into the lottery moments. Here we are. The uh, Trailblazers are supposed to get the ninth pick, but it goes to the Mavericks. Clippers are supposed to get number eight, and that does go to the Clippers. Rockets up here at number seven does go to the Rockets. So far, so good. Don't want to see our team out of the top five for sure. And the Sixers land the number six pick here come the clippers at number five they're supposed to get it and they do damn the clippers had two top 10 picks this is crazy all right top four i mean top two is mj range or top three i think is mj range because hakeem's also in this draft so if we can just land a top two pick we're straight and the bulls land number four overall and we got a top three for sure we're supposed to get the third via vegas predictions i guess and uh, yeah, we get the third pick. Definitely hoping MJ or Hakeem fall down to us. The third is probably the most unfortunate pick. And the 
Pittsburgh Force do snag the second pick. Who gets number one? And with the option between Hakeem Olajuwon and MJ, the Portland Trailblazers have a chance to rewrite history. Of course, they picked the nobody. I think Sam Bowie, right? Second overall in this draft and uh, passed up on MJ. So I don't feel like they're going to make the same mistake again. All right, we don't care about staff signing or the combine or pre-draft workouts really. And here's the expansion period. I think the expansion draft is going to be first, which is huge. We're going to be able to build our team and then pick our player, which I guess I would prefer the inverse. I would prefer to pick our generational guy that's going to be in this draft, right? The, pretty much the player we're going to have to build around and uh, then draft our team. But, you know, it is what it is. And uh, last 2K at least, I don't know about this one. These changed whenever you actually got to the draft. So I'm not even going to look at it until we get to the draft board. And we didn't even snag the first pick. It looks like they got it. And um, they got Danny Ainge, 74 overall. It must be a young guy, only 25. Yeah, so they must have changed a lot. They did. So yeah, like I was saying, if you look at the protected players before it changes for some reason, and these players are dookie, bro. <laughs> what the hell is this? Like you almost have to pick this dude because his name is Truck and look at his face. Like how could you not pick him? But he's 32. All right, who's young? Larry Springs. The youngest we got is 24, which I guess is pretty young in 1984. No one has potential besides Ben Poquette, but he's 29. So it's like, does he really have potential? This is terrible. All right, I think we are going to go Truck Robinson just for overall and maybe as a trade piece, I guess. <laughs> uh, we do get back-to-back -back picks. I forgot it's a snake-type draft. Um... I'm tempted to go young every pick, even if they don't blossom. But like, if you have a B minus potential and you're an okay overall, there's only there's only five guys in the draft with a B minus potential. How many are young? Just these two, and not even that young. All right, Travis Harris or Pete White? How we feeling? I mean, they're both on contract for two years, so it doesn't really matter. But Pete White can play small forward and two guard, and Travis can only play point guard. So I guess we're going this Pete White fella. What is Pittsburgh's strategy to drafting? A young dude, an injured dude. <laughs> interesting take yeah Danny Ainge was definitely the best player in this class by far having the first pick would have been nice I feel like it would have been fair too since they got the better lottery pick but it's cool now I feel like I gotta go Poquette he's got the best potential he probably won't progress anymore but I mean just the, like the chance that he could compared to the rest of these guys who literally will not progress anymore ever I feel like that makes it a pretty easy choice Mr. Ben Poquette welcome to the squad all right there's two guys left that are 24 so I guess we're picking them the force did not get them so the other guy's still there yeah we're just gonna go ahead and pick them up because progression I guess and the rest of the draft really doesn't matter I mean the past two picks didn't really matter but I'm gonna go ahead and draft it anyways I'll show you guys what we end up with so there's not even enough players in the league for us to make a full roster which is actually terrifying luckily there's an nba draft coming up so we'll be able to fill out the rest of the holes but we don't even have a full team here's what the squad's looking like we got the truck <laughs> mr truck robinson number 23 i mean he might be the best 23 in league history so for it you know what i'm saying 76 overall like i said we just picked him as a trade piece really same with Ben Poquette. Maybe we keep on to him. He's got the best potential on the whole team. The team is just trash, really. I mean, there's not a lot to cover. We picked a lot of forwards and two guards. I didn't really care about picking or at least making a competent roster because I knew the draft was coming up and any hole I didn't fill, we'd be able to fill in the draft. But yeah, terrible, terrible team to start. But hey, that's what makes it more fun. Got to rebuild it. All right, here is the 1984 NBA draft. Big moment of truth. Where do the Trailblazers go with the first pick? And can I actually exit? I can't. I kind of wanted to check the mock drafts. Can I still do that? I can. Okay, so before we even start, the Blazers are supposed to go Michael. Um, Pittsburgh is supposed to go Akeem. And John Stockton? I didn't even, why did I not know John Stockton was in this draft? That's actually so sad for my NBA knowledge. I did not know that. So pretty much every board has John Stockton going to us. Besides NBA.com, they say we're going to get a game, which I would prefer. But I mean, top three is a dub. I didn't know Stockton was in this draft class. I'm tripping balls. All right, well, we'll see where the Blazers go. With the first pick, the Trailblazers select Akeem. Staying true to real life, Akeem Elijahwan out of Houston, 7'255 pounds, go to Portland. He's the first pick in this draft class, just like real life. And if Pittsburgh can pick Sam Bowie, I would hate this draft class. Sam Bowie, like real life, and if Pittsburgh can pick Sam Bowie, I would hate if Pittsburgh got MJ as the other expansion team, and they just got this huge leg up on us. But here we go, second pick, the force. Yeah, I mean, wow. I would rather him have gone to Portland, to be honest. I don't want to... <sighs> 
Yeah, they're winning a chip before us. It's pretty easy to see. Um, we're choosing a prospect. We have no scouting because we weren't a team this year. But, I mean, just based off prior knowledge, we got to go John Stockton. It's a pff, dummy easy choice. Two-way diming inside-out score. That is one of the dopest names I've ever heard of. So, yeah, picking John Stockton out of Gonzaga. Not a lot of thought going into this. He averaged 18 assists per game this nation or this season. That is insane. Like, actually, I haven't even processed how ridiculous that is. 18 assists per game? What? And, of course, you could make an argument we could have just traded up for MJ, but I want to make this rebuild at least somewhat realistic. Not hyper-realistic, right? But, obviously, like, we could have got MJ. We could have just traded up for him. But if we were going against two other users, no one's ever taken that pick, right? So we'll see what the Bulls end up actually getting, and we'll go ahead and sim to our next pick. They trade it. They're like, hey, MJ's not here. Screw this. They get Larry Drew in the process of trading this pick. And the Kings, Kansas City Kings, move up and add Kevin Willis. Not a bad pick. Not a bad pick. It's already showing us overalls. I need mean to peep this so early but john stockton was the 81 mj 84 and akeem in 86 of course mj just has the potential of a god right so even though akeem's kind of a better start i mean you'd, you'd prefer mj everyone knows that now here's the question is do i want to move up for a guy like michael cage but jerome kersey is down the board i wouldn't mind snagging jerome or mark hughes of course, I'm not like super knowledgeable of this draft class because it was way before me. But Sam Hunt, like some of these names I know, you know what I mean? I don't, William Ewing, is that like Patrick's brother or something? What the hell is that? So, I mean, I feel like we might be able to make a move to move up soon, but I'm gonna go ahead and see how at least the beginning of this draft goes. All right, coming up to the 15th pick, I think we might have an opportunity to move up for somebody that we like. Jerome Kersey still is on the board about five picks away from being picked roughly. All right, we're sitting here at pick 24. This is the Lakers pick. Celtics coming up next. I've been trying to trade up to get Jerome Kersey, but none of the trades I've been sending out have really been working. So I'm gonna try the Lakers and the Celtics and see if we can snag the man. Damn, they are $3 million in cap space deep. There's no way I'll ever be able to make this work. Yeah, Lakers are a wash as well. Hopefully they don't pick our man. They don't. I mean, our pick is coming up soon, but Jerome Kersey can get picked any moment as well. So I really want to try to move up. The Celtics also $2 million deep in cap space. Like there's just no way. This works though. Scott Wedman makes enough to make the salaries equal, even though they are negative. I don't think they'll take this though. They don't, not even close. And hopefully they don't pick our man. Imagine the Celtics get Jerome Kersey. I mean, Ron Anderson's a good ass pick too. Uh, I guess we're just gonna have to wait. It doesn't make sense for us to trade with any of these other teams because they're also rebuilding. All right, so the fours are on the clock and Jerome Kersey has not gone off the board yet. It doesn't make any sense for us to trade up one pick, right? It's kind of unrealistic. So let's hope that he doesn't. There's no way, dude. There's <laughs> there's no way. They're just sniping. We uh, we have two picks and they sniped both picks. Of course, MJ doesn't really count as a snipe. We were just hoping he'd fall. But damn, dude. They take Jerome Kersey. We've been trying to trade up for him. I offered a trade to the Lakers, the Celtics, the Suns, and one other team, and we could not make salaries work with an even trade. And now we're on the clock, and we're going to have to pick a prospect that isn't Jerome Kersey. There's this auto-generated, ugly-ass Marvin Morris dude. I'm trying to see who they have. We don't have anyone scouted, right? So I kind of got to rely off the big board. And it looks like Marvin Morris and John Caldwell are the two guys. Marvin Morris is just so ugly. We don't know anything about him because, again, we're an expansion team. We could not scout at all. And I kind of lean towards John Caldwell because he's a little bit younger. But at the same time, like, he's significantly lower on a lot of... Well, I guess not. I guess he's really not that much lower. I'm tripping. Okay. Um, but On overall draft boards, he is projected to go a lot lower. But he's 21, and obviously both of these guys aren't going to be very good. I kind of want to pick Marvin Morris just because he's so ugly, and that would be funny. But I think John Caldwell's the pick here. Welcome to Las Vegas. All right, here has how the draft shaped out. You pretty much know it all. Akeem Olajuwon went number one overall to the Blazers, and we got MJ, and we ended up snagging John Stockton, which I'm cool with. It was the worst of the top three, but we for sure wanted the top three pick, right? These are all generational guys that you can build a team around. Um, obviously, Stockton is not on the level of Jordan or Akeem, though, so that sucks. But Otis Thorpe also went in this draft class to the Mavericks. And of course, we got sniped over here in the second round. I almost thought this had Ryan Anderson. I almost had freaking PTSD flashbacks. If you know, you know. And then Jerome Kersey got freaking sniped from us. Luckily, John Caldwell was actually a better pick. They're both small forwards, the same overall, but Caldwell is just a little bit younger. Of course, we could take a look at potential and see if it was actually a good pick. Jerome Kersey has a B potential and John Caldwell is a B minus. So, eh, I mean, you know, they're not game changing guys regardless, but I'm not too sad with it. Marvin Morris was actually a 72. 
and he had B plus potential. So this ugly ass dude out of Miami, Florida. Um, yeah, he was the better pick, but we didn't get him. He goes to the Seattle Supersonics. And of course, we're going to sign both of our rookies. Why would we ever decline this dude? Like our team is garbage. Please pick him up. All right. And here's what free agency is looking like. There's a lot of unrestricted dudes. Maybe restricted free agency just isn't a thing yet because it's 1984. Probably not going to be able to sign any of these guys, especially because this man has 14 offers. And what's our cap space looking like? We're actually negative in cap space, negative one. 1.28 mil which is a hell of a lot we just drafted a lot of heavy guys we definitely need to move truck like now so maybe we could sign somebody but it looks like free agency is going to be kind of dead which is fine because you know no one should want to come here anyways yeah we're going to throw truck in the trade finder see if we can find someone a little younger even just draft picks a first rounder from the kansas city kings way in the future which i don't hate i mean this is going to be like a 20 30 40 year rebuild right so we're cool with taking a future first from the kings i don't love this trade a future pick from the lakers the only problem with this is we know for a fact the lakers are gonna be crazy the nets have potential to be bad two firsts for our own first but it's top three protected so next year's first rounder top three protected for two nuggets picks way in the future though but that might be kind of nice because the chances we get a top three pick are kind of high so i'm sort of stuck between this nets deal it's an 87 first which is way in the future but we get a 26 year old 72 year overall guy which makes our team better i'm stuck between this one because the chances we get you know a top three pick is actually kind of high because we're going to be what worse than the trailblazers worse than the pittsburgh force and they were the worst teams last season right well the blazers were and then the force are just gonna be better than us because they have MJ. So already like we're projected to be one of the worst teams. So it's really between this Nets and Nuggets trade. This might come back to backfire trading, but I mean, at the end of the day, we're still gonna have a first. The only problem is if we get like the fourth or fifth pick with this team next year this is gonna trade is gonna look completely dookie so we're gonna trade our next year's first round on a rebuilding team for another 86 first round pick and an 88 first to hopefully build towards the future and we'll see if this ends up biting us in the butt can we get more out of it because just something feels off can we get a second out of him too we cannot they said f you they don't even take the trade they'll give us a second for gary hobson who's gary hobson some random dude and you give us a second for him yeah i mean i'm down for that let's do that all right and there goes next year's first and the truck truck robinson now i think the biggest problem with our salary cap situation is everyone on the team is signed right like we don't have any free agents so we don't have any room to like sign someone in replace of somebody else and this dude is making 800k as a nobody how long are you on contract this year and next year uh, can we move Mr. Collins, please? All right, Henry Collins, we could get a second for him. I would take that in a heartbeat. Please, Jazz, please take him off our heads. All right, we have 212K in cap room now, which is nice. We can actually get a player with that. Of course, these are all really old guys. Bobby Maggetti, 67 overall, 22 years old with A- minus potential. Might have to be the move. Nate Archibald, he doesn't have any offers, but he's, oh, he's 35. I didn't even peep that. Yeah, screw that. I think the no-brainer choice is to go after Bobby Maggetti. He could get some PT for us this year because our team is just that bad. But if we're going to get him, I need him long term. Is he going to accept like a hundred, like a four-year deal if we put a back onto it? He declines it. Okay. Um, what if I gave him some more money? I mean, I don't, I don't mind giving him money. We have it. I mean, not really, but this is the guy we want to sign, right? If this is our guy, we want to make sure we can snag him. And I don't know what his other offer is. Can I find it? I can. The Bullets have his 100% interest because he only wants a one-year deal. All right. Well, I already sent him a little too many contracts, so we can't negotiate any more with him. But let's go ahead and look for another guy we can put our eyes onto. I like the look of the Steve Coulter guy, another guy with just high potential. And I feel like we could snag for a long-term deal. He didn't have any offers, I don't think. Oh, he does have an offer. One year, 45K from the Mavericks, and he has what, like, super interest in it? Crap. So I'm going to have to give him something that has some max interest. He would take two years, 100K. I think I'm okay with offering him the one year deal and then just re-signing him later, even though he's gonna be a little more expensive later. If that's what gets him on the team, that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna go ahead and look at the next screen. Bobby Maggetti agrees. That kind of came out of nowhere. I thought we were the worst offer on him. So we get him and Steve Coulter, and I don't even think we have the money to do anything else. Yeah, we have 2K left in salary cap. Free agency is not for us. Gonna go ahead and simulate it. All right, 
Here's the squad, progression and everything. Not enough progression on it, for sure, after the signings we just made, but the team has potential. John Stockton is definitely the guy, the face of the team, along with John Caldwell, who we picked in the second round, actually our second best player, even though he was a second round pick. Uh, he's playing up to a 72 overall with probably morale or something. So yeah, he's a beast. And our two big free agency pickups did not progress at all. Hopefully they'll be able to progress during their contract, definitely, especially Bobby McGetty. I thought with eight minus potential, he would do a little more, but if we give him some PT, I, you know, he'll definitely progress. I will go ahead and simulate to the 1984-1985 NBA season. All right, here's what the rotation is looking like. I definitely want to get Maget and Steve Coulter some minutes, and they are getting some. I don't need to start him necessarily. I don't know why John Caldwell is not starting. Please start this man. Like, he is the second best player on the whole team. And this is what the lineup's looking like. I mean, pretty solid. <laughs> Kind of. Got John Stockton up here with John Caldwell. Let's go see what the Force did and if they did better than us. Um, <laughs> a debate could be made that the Force are significantly better than us. Michael Jordan, Wayne Cooper, Danny Ainge, Luther Gooden, and Jerome Kersey. So uh, they are those guys. So we can pretty much expect our pick to be pretty bad. We do want to win our pick back this year. And I thought like this is a good stopping point just for the introduction video. You know, we got the team, got Mr. John Stockton, got sniped in the draft. And I don't really know how I'm going to upload these videos because I just kind of came up with that, this idea like right now and then sat down and hit record and did very little pre-thinking. But I know this is going to be an entire series. Like I said, we're going to be running from now all the way at least until present day and try to make this hustlers team a legitimate franchise in nba history and hopefully we're going to be able to you know get some big names other than john stockton throughout and build us a nice little organization so appreciate you guys for watching if you're excited for the series give it a thumbs up let's aim for three likes on today's video <laughs> oh yeah i guess you'll see in the next video of the series how many games were how many seasons we're simulating per video because i still don't know yet but yeah see you guys in the next one like and subscribe peace